name we praise. Raise up your two hands as you sing this song loud and clear. Holy God, do it again, again, do I was 
was lost, I was lost, but Jesus found, hallelujah, found she that went astray, but is loving, but is loving, and I Hallelujah, put me back into his form. Hallelujah, hallelujah. of righteousness but by his grace alone it's not by works of righteousness but by his grace alone it's not by works of righteousness but by his grace alone oh i am completing oh it's complete oh. hallelujah complete in him hallelujah yeah 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 send that fire the holy ghost fire send the fire again the holy ghost oh send the fire Send the fire, send the fire, send the fire again, the Holy Ghost, oh, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire, send the fire again. The holy God, 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 the fullness of the God that bodily dwelleth in the Lord. The fullness of the God that bodily dwelleth in the Lord. The fullness of the God that bodily dwelleth in the Lord. Oh, I am completed. Oh, it's complete. Oh. Hallelujah. Complete, complete, complete in him. Hallelujah. I am complete in Raise up your right hand to the heavenlies, beloved, and declare this loud and clear. Every problem that came into my life through the blood of my parents. If I wear your shoes, I will shout it loud and clear. Can you say it again with holy anger? Your time is up. Damn! In the name of Jesus. Kill the problem tonight. In the name of Jesus.
In Jesus name we pray. Listen. Very, very carefully. There are some people here tonight. If they will pray the way they should really pray. Within the next 48 hours. Certain things will happen. That will change our lives forever. So any problem. That came into my life. Through anything I have swallowed. Don't say, well, I don't remember swallowing anything. You never can tell what you swallowed as a kid. Can you say it again loud and clear? Your time is up. Die. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. Jesus is here. His power is in this place. Nasa kapoya bo shente rabo. Beke pela kaya bo shente rabo kosente la baraba. In Jesus name we pray. <laughs> Something is happening already. So any problem that came into my life through polygamy. Can you say this with boiling anger? Is that the loudest you can shout it? Your time is up. In the name of Jesus. Your time is up. Masopoko yabo shende raba. Makandara bo sete yabo koshente. Their time is up. Their time is up. In Jesus name we pray. I'm ah, making progress. Beautiful progress. Any problem that came into my life through dreams. Your time is up. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes. Don't negotiate with the enemy. This is not a night to negotiate. Masekaya boshente raboshente laba. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Three more things to address. Oh, there is a woman here who should really pray. Because you are just, you are 90% close to your ultimate breakthrough. Don't relax the prayers. Any problem that came into my life through anything that I have said. Can you say this with boiling anger? Your time is up. In the name of Jesus. Through anything that I have said. Yes, 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 yes. Your time is up. In Jesus them we pray. So any problem that came into my life through my naming ceremony your time 
rise up. Die in the name of Jesus. Masopola kaya boshenta rabo kontia. Something is up over there. Yes. In Jesus name we pray. Any problem that came into my life through anything I've stepped upon. Can you say this with boiling anger? Your time is up. Die. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, beloved. Open your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. And we thank you for your grace which brought us here. Thank you for your mighty power. Thank you for your strength and your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you because you are a God that answered prayers. Thank you for the mightiness of your name and your name which is above all names. Thank you for the efficacy and power in the blood of Jesus. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, open our understanding. Tonight, speak to us by your power. Tonight, make us candidates of uncommon breakthroughs. Tonight, lay your hands upon our lives. So that we'll become another man, another woman. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a say God bless you. Amen. I'd like you to turn to three persons. Say, my friend, listen very carefully tonight. Talk to three persons like that. Amen. What you are speaking about this evening, the prayers for it, we may not be able to conclude it tonight, but let me just lay the foundation. I'm speaking on rewriting your family history. Rewriting your family history. That's why I say you should listen very, very carefully. Rewriting your family history. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. Isaiah 43, verse 18. He says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. I will do a new thing. That's what the Lord said. I know there's somebody here tonight. That prophecy is for you. If you are the person, let your amen be loud and clear. What is history? By history, we are referring to the past. We are referring to bygone periods. We are talking about your yesterday. We're talking about the story of one's life. We're talking about the old days. History is the study of human past. Study of human past. There is a problem. A serious problem, beloved. Which I want you to listen to me very, very carefully. The family is the first institution of the Almighty. It came before the church. It came before schools. It came before any science. It is the first divine institution. The family is the cradle of civilization. And every family has branches, they have leaves, they have roots. I want you to think very, very carefully. Think deeply. In the last 20 years, maybe I should even say 10 years, how many members of your family has really made it? In the last 20 years, 
How many people can you refer to personally in your family that, well, this one has achieved a measure of progress? In the last 30 years, has anybody arisen in your family that you can say, well, this one showed the glory of our family? If not, you are half pressed to pray. In some families, when they start getting ahead, they will go far, things just will fall apart. They will become so great, but something will pull them down. They go from grace to grass. Instead of them to now be a thing of glory to their family, they become a thing of disgrace. In some families, they always fall into one sin or the other. They always follow the iniquity of their forefathers. In some family, the enemy has inspired their forefathers to be issuing curses, curses, curses on the children. And as they are busy cursing the children who are to come, those children are becoming poorer and poorer and poorer. In some families, the evil things the parents have said about all the children, they are now coming to pass. And the parents who said them are already gone. A parent curse his child. He said, as a gate does not have rest, that the child will not have rest. The child never had rest as a result of the curse issued upon his life. These are very, very serious matters. I know somebody that was cursed by his parents like that. And they, they, they told him, say, we know that you are supposed to prosper abroad, but you will never prosper. And the problem started. The first day he wanted to travel abroad, he had an accident on the way to the airport. He came back with a broken leg. It took six months to mend the broken leg. By the time they released him from Gobi Hospital, he went back to go and to renew his visa. They were angry with him. I said, why didn't you go? Why didn't you go? Eventually, he got another visa. He went again. That day, he was even in the plane. Before the plane took off, this strange sickness just started. Somebody who has never conversed before in his life, a, 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 an able-bodied man, above 30, began to stretch and to foam and to converse inside the plane. They quickly said, oh, good enough, we have not taken off. They quickly sent him back. It was conversing and foaming in the mouth. The conversion and foaming only stopped when he had the sound of the plane taken off. He went again. And this time he even got over there only for them to deport him back. The power of evil was spoken in the family has kept many families taunted and in terrible disarray. In some family, they're always lying to each other. In some families, they are experts at coloring the truth. There are some families, they are always out to get what they want. No, no matter what it does to other people, they'll get it at any cost, but later they will suffer for it. In some family, you either find one single person you can call a responsible human being. In some families, they always pass through one infirmity or the others. Every year, in and out, somebody is always crying that something has gone wrong. In some family, everybody in the family has some skin disease or the other that they have to spend a lot of money looking after. In some families, there is always marital turbulence. Always marital turbulence. They will marry, lose the marriage. They will marry, lose the marriage. They will marry, lose the marriage. This is the trend. In some families, there will always be one teenage girl who will get pregnant at very early age in school. In some families, it's always so difficult to find anybody to marry. In some families, the anointing of polygamy is just flowing through. Two wives, three wives, four wives, that's how they're all going. In some families, there is a lot of anger. They all get angry and lose their temper. And then when you see them getting angry, there is trouble. In some family, when their father gets angry, unless somebody put palm oil on cutlass, the anger will continue. In some family, there is a chain of adultery just moving through. As you are sitting down there tonight, beloved, I'm not abusing you or trying to run anybody down, but this is the fact. I'd like you to look at your mother's side now, right there where you are sitting look at your father's side too how many of them are making it how many of them can you really be proud to say well these people they are my people there are many families who have spiritual worms in their roots miracles fly over their head pass under their feet but does not touch them in some families spiritual growth is so minimal or non-existent in some families the children are always disobedient unruly arm robbers all kinds of terrible things that's what the children do in some families, there is very poor health. All of them are running high blood pressure. All of them are running arthritis. All of them are running asthma. All of them are running some terrible infirmity. In some family, what you see is repeated marriages, repeated marriages, repeated marriages, cancelled, repeated marriages, divorce, re- 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 cancel, cancellation of divorce, and divorce again. In some family, it's really terrible, chronic, acidic poverty. 
in some family, somebody in that family will go and do something. They will issue a curse on the person and the curse will never be removed. This is a very terrible thing. For example, three times in this church now, we have caught thieves stealing people's mobile phone, stealing people's money in their bag. And three times, these thieves have been pregnant women. So the police that used to deal with them cannot even touch her because she is a pregnant woman who is a thief. Now when she gives birth to that child, a child of a mother who is stealing in the house of God, trouble continues. In some families, there will, be, there will always be somebody who will commit suicide. Commit suicide. When I say commit suicide, it doesn't mean you put a rope on your neck alone and just die. No, no, that, that's suicide, but there's another suicide again. When you see something that is go, going to kill you and you go and put your head there by force, it's suicide. In some family, they have this unreasonable mood. Argumentative spirits. In some family, you have this bitterness, chain of bitterness flowing around and chain of confusion. In some families, they help people, they help people after helping people. They even help their junior brothers to go out of school. When the brothers are out of school, they can't help the man who helped them to go out of school. And the person who sent them to school is now a very poor man. And the ones who sent to school are now rich, will not help him. In some family, friends abandon them at their greatest hour of need. In some families, people will always repay all the good that they do with evil. In some family, the problem is laziness, chronic laziness. Daddy will wake up in the morning, he's going to play coupon or he's playing draft. Mother will wake up in the morning, just put some small, small, uh, tiny, tiny piece of paper on the basket and that's what she wants to feed the family with. In some family, all of them have terrible nightmares. In some families, depression. You always find people getting insane there. In some families, alcoholism. In some families, there is this chain of regular accidents. In some families, there is this memory failure. Memory failure. In some families, there is this chain of premature death. Some is constant financial woes. They invest big money and it fails completely. In some families, there is a lot of sexual perversion. This is a, these are very, very serious matters. The enemy has cleverly organized to throw stones at families. But where the stones have met each family is different. That's why if you don't know your family tree, you don't know anything. If you don't know the tree from which you are falling, you are just a leaf flowing and the wind can blow you anywhere. If you don't know the son or daughter of whom you are, then you are in trouble indeed. There are some families that are in poverty from generation to generation. In some families, when big contracts, big things, always get signed. But the next moment, something scatters it. Some families, they never start any good project. They cannot point to anybody in that family line who has built even an ordinary boy's quarter. And those that built are killed very quickly by their envious, satanic brothers and sisters. In some families, all the men in the family must marry witches and all the women must marry wizards. In some families, there is death at unusual ages. In some families, there will always be somebody in, in the jail at any one time or the other. In some families, there is a lot of religious blindness. One, somebody in the family stuck to a, a, a dark church, false church, and all of them will just go and kill there in that dark church. They will have their city there, they will have their cemetery there, and that is how it runs. In some families, all men are poor and all the women are rich. In some families, as a matter of necessity, all the men there must be fed by their wives. They won't, they will never find a good job to feed them. In some families, they have an evil mark of hatred upon them. Anywhere they go, people hate them with perfect hatred. In some families, they are suffering from what you call diminishing returns. They work so hard, but they get very little back. Great grandfather was a messenger. Grandfather was a senior messenger. Father was a clerk. And now son is a senior clerk. In some families, there is disfavor and delayed deliverance. Deliverance that happens to some people in two minutes, three minutes, two years. Maybe with some families. These are very, very serious lamentations. Serious lamentations. Serious lamentations. I want you to understand that if you as a child of God happen to come from a family where... There has been a trend. Part of the reason you got born again is for you to rewrite that history. The story might have become bad before you. Now that it has got into your turn, 
it is your responsibility as a born again spirit filled child of God to rewrite that history many are suffering from evil patterns let's look at Abraham just a little bit Abraham slept with his housemaid Agar you will have thought that was the end of the matter but what happened Jacob too did exactly the same thing. Look at Genesis chapter 35. Genesis 35 from 22. Genesis 35 from 22. Genesis 35, 22 says, And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land, that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah his father's concubine, and Israel had it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's was born, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. And the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's and maid, Dan and Naphtali. So Dan and Naphtali were actually children from Rachel's and maid, just like Abraham and Agar. Verse 26. And the sons of Zilpah, Leah's and maid, Gad and Asha. So, Gad and Asha were at least four of those twelve that made up the children of Jacob were from handmaids. A pattern. A pattern. Abraham lied. He told Abimelech a lie that his wife was not his wife. Forty years later, Isaac told Abimelech that his wife was not his wife. Sixty years after, Jacob and his mother deceived Isaac by pushing Jacob forward to behave like his son. Eighty years later, Laban, the uncle of Jacob, deceived Jacob. Hundred years later, Jacob's children now deceived Jacob by telling him that Joseph was dead. One twenty years after, Reuben slept with one of his father's wives. One forty years later, Judah slept with his daughter-in-law. So you can see this pattern. Moving and moving and moving and moving on. In Genesis chapter 49, Genesis 49, I read from verse 1. Genesis 49 from verse 1. There are people here tonight who need not only to pray like a mad prophet, but they need to pray until they can see that something, a transaction has taken place in the spirit realm. Beloved, you, you cannot continue like this. There must be a dramatic change. In Genesis chapter 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that we shall be for you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear you, sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellence of dignity, and the excellence of power. What a powerful description. Unstable as water. Now the unfortunate curse. Thou shall not excel. And that's what finished Reuben. Eventually, when the children of Reuben rose up in the desert, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, said, Our father is the first one. You are Moses. You are from Levi. You have, you have no right. How can you be com- com- commanding everybody? The ground opened up and swallowed them and their families because there was a curse on him. A curse of thou shall not Excel. Can you close your eyes, beloved? And with a voice, loudest, the loudest voice you can gather. Every curse, Every curse. of thou shall not excel issued against my life. Can I hear you shouting this loud and clear? There is somebody needs to shout this like a mad prophet. There is somebody who still needs to shout this loud and clear. Break! In the name of Jesus. Piata Sati Kanta. Borika Sopende Kayabo Shenta. Open your mouth and begin to decline. The powers that do not want you to excel. This is the time to destroy them. 
We are here for serious business. Pata sekatanda kayaba. Rebo bakasanta laka. Maponde ke sepende ke yabo shenta. Aha, aha. In Jesus name we pray. I say coming back to this prayer. Verse 5. Simon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of quality in the habitation. Oh my soul, come not thou into thy secret. Or to thy servant, my honor, be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man. In their self they dig down a wall. Cast be their anger, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob. Cast be their anger, verse 7 again, for it was fierce. And their Lord, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. And that was exactly what God did. That's what he did. And Moses, who was from that family, eventually got to the edge of the promised land. And as anointed as he was, this was enough to hold him back. This is why we all need to pray. No one is left out. Verse 8. Judah. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy arms shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion swear from the prey my son that had gone up. He stood down. He cast as a lion. As an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Nor a lord give up from between his feet. Until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the guardian of the people be. That powerful prophecy. Did not come to pass. Because of the mistake of Judah. By going to commit sexual immorality. Beloved. Five minutes of wrong sex. Is sufficient to rewrite your family history negatively. Ah, you say, but it's my boyfriend. We're having fun. You call it fun. The Bible calls it rewriting your history. That thing that Judah did. Destroyed the colorful destiny of Judah. Until David came. There was no scepter in Judah. None. Other families were in charge. Until David came. It was David that now began to rewrite that history. You will rewrite the history of your family for good today in the name of Jesus. You will rewrite it. 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 You will rewrite it for good. In the name of Jesus. But then, the evil flow that Judah has set up did not leave the family. And the problem of sexual problem, the problem of sexual immorality went in. And any time any member of Judah's family was about to do something great and good, a woman comes along. And that is the end. If you read carefully your Bible too, you find that most first bonds in the Bible were failures. Cain was the firstborn. It was the first firstborn failure. And later, Ishmael, too, which was a firstborn, who should have had the inheritance, the renters passed to Isaac. Twin sons were born to Isaac. His son was the firstborn. The thing jumped over his son and went to Jacob again. Then the twelve sons of Jacob now. The youngest was Joseph. But he was the one that inherited the blessing. He inherited the blessing. This is why we need help. We need to pray. We need to understand. Look at verse 22. Verse 22. Joseph is a fruitful bough. Even a fruitful bough by a well. Whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him. And shot at him. And hated him. So, that, so no surprise then. That they dealt with Joseph. All the suffering and the problem Joseph went through. There it is. It was the work of the archers. Those who were firing arrows. Can you raise your right hand to the heavenlies again? And shout this loud and clear. Powers of darkness. Firing arrows at my destiny. There. In the name of Jesus. Piada seka tendeka. In 
In Jesus' name we pray. Therefore, tonight, beloved, the decision is yours. You want to continue the way things have been going? Or you want to be able to declare that, well, this is how it has been going. But my case is different. Because you need to know where you are coming from. As a child of God, you must determine that your rain drop, its rain drop will wash away mountains. Rain drop. You may not see yourself as being significant, but with God on your side, and with you doing what God wants you to do, your rain drop has the power to wash away mountains. With God on your side, and with your determination to rewrite the history, your ants will devour tiger. The way you are saying it makes as if you don't believe. <laughs> With God on your side too, your star shall brighten the earth. <laughs> Say, I will not embrace defeat. By the, power. by the power in the blood of Jesus. Blood of Say it three times. How do you rewrite your family history? I want to go into the steps now. I want to go into the steps now. And I'd like you to listen very, very carefully. The first thing to do for anybody who wishes to rewrite his family history, you want to be able to declare that this might have been the pattern that took place before me. But my case is different. I am not under that umbrella. The first thing is new birth. You must be born again. You must encounter Christ. I'm sad to tell you that most people who come to church are not born again. They're not born again. They have not experienced Christ. You must get to the level where what the Bible says that all things are passed away, all things have become new apples in your life. That's the first thing. That one is not negotiable. If you are not born again, the devil will keep messing you up. By just surrendering your life to Jesus, it is a terrible tragedy in the kingdom of darkness. Number two, you must confess and repent of your sin and those of your ancestors. Confess and repent of your sin and those of your ancestors. You can repent on their behalf. That's what the Bible says. And that's correct as far as the word of God is concerned. The third key is that you must die to self. Mr. Flesh must die in your life. So that when you are forgotten or you are neglected and they just slight you and you don't sting inside but your heart is happy. That is what it means by dying to self. It means that even as you are sitting down there now this somebody just comes and gives you a dirty slap. Bwah! You say God bless you. No reaction. That's what you mean by the flesh is dead. That's what you mean. When you are doing good and they are speaking evil of you and you don't feel angry with anybody, you give them advice, they disregard your advice. They ridicule your opinion. And you refuse to let the anger rise in your heart. You even refuse to defend yourself. That's what we mean by dying to self. When people are abusing you and they are maligning your name and you don't feel any bitterness towards them, that's what we mean by dying to the flesh. When you see your brother prospering more than you are doing and there is no envy at all in your heart, that's what it means by dying to self. God forbid if when you as a sister, you are walking along the street, all of a sudden you saw your husband with another woman and, and, and he's putting his hand around her neck and you just say, God bless you and you walk away. That's dying to self. You must die to the flesh. So the flesh must be completely destroyed. Key number four. You must carry out a spiritual mapping of your family. You must look around your family house for images, symbols, marks, tokens of darkness. Check your body for any mark on your body. Check your legs. Check your hands. 
Check your chest. Check your face. Check your cheek. Check your breast. Check your thighs. Check your arms. Check your stomach. Check your back. Find out whether there are symbols there and what those symbols stand for. If they are there, erase them with the blood of Jesus. Because the power threatening your problem may actually be on your skin. All those images of metal, wood, carving pictures of your family house should be thoroughly examined. If you are in this service today and you see half a father somewhere who is still worshipping idols and who is boasting with his idol power, then don't blame us. Any prayer we pray today, if the man is behind your problem, well, too bad. Because once you start praying now, once you start praying now and these things are the ones holding you down from rewriting the history, his idols will rise up and deal with him. So if you have images of metal, wood or so in your family house, you don't know what they stand for, you must reject them, dissociate yourself from them and disown them. You must force the spirit behind them to disown you. In case you come from a family where many things are buried in your backyard, you don't even, you don't even know what has been buried. You can spiritually destroy those things through prayers. You need to sit down and analyze your family house and destroy the powers of darkness hanging there. Destroy the evil costumes, the hunter's costume, the lodge costume, the cult costume, the idol worshipping costume, the masquerade costume. Send fire to them and destroy them wherever they are. All these agents have musical instruments. Maybe as a child when you were ignorant, you were dancing to that music. You need to withdraw your dancing and deal with those musical instruments. Or maybe they have special plants in your family that are treated and worshipped. There are trees in your family compound. Find out what they are there for. They may not allow you to touch those things physically. But even right here where you are, your hour of prayer can go there. Some have stones, rocks, rivers, animals, snakes, cow, rodents that are worshipped in the family. You need to carry out this investigation. You need to find out the type of ritual sacrifices prescribed by your parents and grandparents. You need to trace such sacrifices to the idols that they worship and deal with them directly or indirectly. They may not allow you to touch the idols, but you can destroy the idols with fire press right here where you are. Find out about the day you were born, the time, the date, the season. Find out the significance and associate problems. If you're a very good reader of the Bible, do you know that there are evil days, the days not to be born? Cancel those days by fire. Check all the habits of your family. Do you come from a family who are known to be very fetish? You need, you need to pray very well. And f- beloved, now this may sound insulting, but please, I, I apologize. Are you sure you are really the child of your father? Are you very, really, very sure? Plenty of people don't really know. How were you really conceived? Did your mother properly marry your father? We have many cases where married women who got pregnant by other men and not their husbands just transfer the children to them. Are you from a polygamous background? These are foundation to pray off in your life. Try and find out all the names you were given on the day they were naming you. All the names. Not the ones you are bearing, the, the long ones they gave to you. Find out what each name means and deal with them. These are very, very serious matters. All the funny, funny, strange, strange names, you will, you deal with them. Names you shouldn't play with at all. If they call you, I won't be called, God have mercy on you. Okonkwa, God have mercy on you. Njoku, God have mercy on you. Ogunde, God have mercy on you. Babatunde, Fasome, all those names, God have mercy on you. Nyang, Ekanem, Ogumbo, God have mercy on you. Find out what that name means. Find out too what name they give to your company. Do not assume they are innocent names. Find out too whether you have family shrines and deal with them. What special talents did you find in your family? And did you find out how the power behind these ones? In, in fact, your complexion, your height, your weight can be a way designed by Satan to identify you specially for problems. Does your family have any special occupation? Like carving, like hunting, like fishing, like farming? Find out how they started that occupation. Find, find out whether you really should be in that family, this family business you say you are doing. There are names, marks, trade, occupation, talents that are given to people who serve Satan. 
Is there any special food they cook in your family? Find out why they eat this food. In some families, after childbirth, women are not allowed to eat certain food. Find out why. I know some family, it is taboo for you to share an egg with somebody. You must, you must eat the whole egg. You can't break a little bit and give it to somebody else. If he breaks it, it may not last that day before he dies. Carry out this spiritual mapping. Number five. Investigate the root cause of any trouble you may have. Investigate the root cause of any problem you may have. Six. Declare serious fasting. Serious fasting. Not this kind of 70 days fasting we are doing. That one is okay because it's going for a long time. These are fast. These are, we're talking about dry fast. Seven. Possess aggressive determination to change the course of your family history and to make history yourself. Aggressive determination to change. Eight. Destroy every evil family altar. Destroy every evil family altar. Nine. Carry out family deliverance if possible. If possible. Most times it's not possible. Ten. Reverse covenants, evil covenants, and nullify curses. Reverse evil covenants and nullify curses. Eleven. Pray prophetic prayers. The kind of prayer we're going to start praying just now. Twelve. Pray destiny changing prayers. The kind of prayers we're going to start praying very soon. These are keys to rewrite your family history. These are keys to getting yourself away from any evil umbrella that has been shielding your family so that you will rewrite history. And people will say, well, this kind of evil flow continued until so, so, so came on the line. As far as you know, that is the desire of your heart. And you can clearly see cases of collective captivity. You have done very serious thinking and you find that really you can't see any trend that gladdens your heart in your family. Then if you will pray from your heart tonight, only seven prayers that I want you to pray for now, you will see what the Lord will begin to do. Rise up on your feet now, beloved. Rise up on your feet now. Those of you who used to come to Wednesday meeting, just shake your head because you are a pastor or you are somebody in your church. It will be a tragedy if you go away from here with a plastic experience. And those of you who used to pray delicate prayers, this is not the day for delicate prayers. This is not the day for sanitized prayer. No, it's not the day of sanitized prayer. This is the day for crude praying to get things done. A farmer does not go to the field and you are playing with the ground. When there was no expressway by Lagos to Ibadan, the whole of that place was just a forest. But the day the bulldozer moved in, and they began to walk. By the time the Buddhists had walked for about a few days, the place didn't look beautiful. It didn't look as if there's going to be a road there. But you see, we need those kind of bulldozing prayers. And once the bulldozer is moving, both small tree and big tree will push them down. It will trample us serpents and scorpions. They had no respect for those kind of things. It's like that Yoruba proverb. Say the strand that say the elephant should not go uphill. The elephant will drag it there. Those are the kind of prayers to pray today. But if you like, you could keep quiet. That means you want that history to continue. David arose to rewrite the history of his family. Joseph arose to rewrite the history of his family. Ezekiah arose to rewrite the history of his family. And they were able to rewrite it. So we can say today that, oh, this one was an evil person, this one was an evil person, the same family, but when he got to Ezekiah, his story was different. All eyes closed. If you are here today, you are not born again. Don't bother praying this prayer. It don't work. But if you are here, you say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Wherever you are, while all eyes are closed, just raise up your right hand and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, I come to you tonight. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you say that short prayer with me, immediately we close, just find a way to the front here so that we can pray more with you. Hmm. Are we ready for tonight's prayer? Because I see destinies changing. 
I see many stubborn situations being completely reversed. If you pray here tonight, and your voice goes away, <laughs> and you, are, you get, you collect the pen to the right history. Oh, you have made a powerful bargain. If we don't finish our prayers tonight, we continue next Wednesday. Oh God, our Lord! I change my family history! In the name of Jesus! Just in Jesus name we pray. I stopped you because of some people here. Let me inform those people. The enemy is pushing you to the edge of giving up. Because you are so depressed about the problems you are going through. This is your hour of solution now. So you better pray with holy anger. So change my family history. In the name of Jesus. Yes. More pali sakatanda ka. Dariabo soponde ke yabo shente yaba. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Jesus is here tonight. And he asked what to do in the midst. Aha, 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 aha. To set the kapanda yaba. Yes, be released. Be set free. 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 Be released. Be released. Be set free. Be set free. Maseka po yabo shenda yabo kapanda kentia. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence now. Yes. Yes. Yes, something is happening over there. Yes. The spider of high blood pressure is being taken out of somebody's chest. Someone here, you've tried to commit suicide before. And the spirit of death did not release you. But due to that prayer you just prayed now. That spirit has just released you. <laughs> Someone here. All your children are against you. But the yoke of that hatred is being broken now. <laughs> Someone here too. The enemy has been manipulating your menstruation. Go and check it now because that menstruation is back. Someone here. One native doctor shaved the air on your body. And use the air to collect your virtues. But that prayer you pray has changed this situation. <laughs> Satanic balloon in the stomach has been punctured now. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. Someone is there. You've never had excellent examination result. But as a result of this prayer you just prayed tonight, you shall have dumbfounding examination success. Declare this with violence. My end shall be better than my beginning. Can you shout this loud and clear? Say it loud and clear. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Master Kiaba. In Jesus' name we pray. I wish.
wish you could see what is happening today here. These next three prayers, we are going to higher realms now. Sister, pray with holy anger. Brother, pray with merciless violence. Anything buried that is pulling me down. Can you shout this loud and clear? In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. Jesus. Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Anything buried that is pulling me down. Dead. In the name of Jesus. Aha, aha, aha. Masopokoya Boshente Yaba. In Jesus, then we pray. Uh-huh. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Aha. Masika Pontende. Ribosente Kaya Boshente Rabosente. Say this loud and clear. Oracles of my fathers are speaking against my progress. Please don't joke with this oracle prayer. Can I hear the sister shouting it? Brothers, shout it loud and clear. Everybody together now. Jesus Yes their speech must expire in the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. Yes. Musekaya Bashanta. In Jesus' name we pray. Very good. Very good. Very good. Power of collective captivity. Can you shout it the way I shouted my own? My life is not your candidate. Can you say this again loud and clear? Therefore, scatter. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Masikete da yabo shente karabaka. Do semi katonde ketera bo sentia. Thou, 
Glove of mighty man in battle. Glory to your name. Masopo takaya bo shendera bo koncha. Daribo sombo kantenda kaya bo shempela bo kotenda. Barana kamba kasepela katela ba. Boribo soponde ke peka poa. Boka ponda sentenda kampa. Daribo soponde ke ya bo shenta. Yaribo kosente ya bo shenta ya bo koyaba. Baka ribo soponde katenda katala bo santa. Lere ala bo halaka sempela ka. Baka tende ke ya bo shente ya ba. Mori la kasente ya bo shente ya bo koraba. Aha, aha. Aha, aha, aha. Aha. In Jesus name we pray. Don't say, I don't think this concerns me. This next one. (laughs) Don't say, I don't think it concerns me. Jacob told Reuben, Thou shalt not excel. You will now shout this loud and clear. Parental curses. That is working against my life. Clear away. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Something is happening. Something is happening. In Jesus' name we pray. I rewrite my family history by the power in the blood of Jesus. Can I hear the sister saying this? Sisters, shout it loud and clear. Brothers, shout it loud and clear. Everybody together now. Make it louder than that. Shout it again loud and clear. Shout it again loud and clear. I write my family history by the power in the blood of Jesus. You now pray this one. Since you have declared that one now. Since you have declared that one now. Any problem that come into my life through any dead relative Can you say this loud and clear? You are a liar. Dead. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship.